Hello, in this video, I'm gonna go through what needs to be done to remove that F5 fault from a Valiant Ecomax boiler. Now the F5 fault is an overheat problem. So for some reason, your boiler has overheated and it's tripped itself out for safety. And I'm gonna go through what I have to do to reset the boiler. I'm also gonna go through possible causes on the system which may have caused the fault. And then what I can do to try and remove that fault. And finally, this may help the engineers. I'm gonna range rate the boiler, which means I'm gonna reduce its power to try and stop this boiler from tripping out. And stick around to the end where I go for the best settings for the thermostat on the front of your boiler. Now here comes the disclaimer. Unfortunately, only gas engineers should be fixing this fault because to fix this fault, I need to go to the combustion area of the boiler. And legally, only gas registered engineers should be going to this part of the boiler. So I've left links to the gas register in the description below. So I take no responsibility for any actions that you may take. My name is Mark Ballard and I've been a gas registered engineer for over 20 years. The aim of my channel is to help you with your central heating and your plumbing. If you find this video helpful in any way, then please give me some feedback by clicking on that thumbs up and that will also help others to find the video. If you think this video is useful, then click on that subscribe. And if you want to receive a notification the next time I upload a help video, then click on that bell. And of course, share the video with your friends. And I'd like to say a really big thank you to everybody who's left a donation in my toolbox fund. It's really appreciated and it helped me to make more videos which will hopefully help you. Right, now let's get on with the video. All the links throughout this video can be found in the description below, at the end of the video or in the cards above. So here's the boiler and this is a Valiant Ecomax Pro 18. And as you can see, it's got 05F flashing in the display. So this is an F5 fault where the boiler has tripped out because it's overheated. I have my control selected and my hot water and my central heating are turned on. So the boiler is being told to come on. Now if I turn the boiler off like that, and wait a few seconds, turn it back on, the boiler will now try and go through its startup process. So you can see there, it says heating is on. That's the symbol of the radiator and the tap. The boiler is now going through its startup process. It's gone straight to the F5 fault again, and the red light is now flashing. Once the red light is flashing, the boiler will not operate until the fault is fixed. Now, the first thing I'm gonna do is check the overheat thermostat, because 99% of the time, that is what the fault is going to be. Now, to do this, I need to remove the front cover by undoing these two screws. These boilers were only manufactured from 2003 to 2007, so there's only four years of manufacture before they changed the design and they removed this thermostat from the boiler. Now, this F5 fault is a real pain in the neck because it doesn't take a lot to reset it, but you, the boiler owner, should not be doing that. So an engineer needs to be called and these boilers are getting older now and so this is happening more and more. But there are a few things I can do to try to reduce this so this fault is less likely to occur. And I'll go through those after I've reset the overheat thermostat. So this is an F5 fault and when we look in the book it says that this is an overheat fault. And when I look through the comments it says overheats that operated maximum temperature exceeded. Check the mister. Error in the system with thermistor at a maximum setting. Faulty overheat connection. And finally, check pump is wired into the appliance and not to the programmer. This would cause pump overrun. And as I've said in other videos, these comments are just guides. So they just point you in a direction where the fault may be. I now need to remove the combustion chamber burner cover. You should only be doing this if you are a gas registered engineer because once you remove this cover, it will affect how the boiler will operate. A gas registered engineer knows the implications and the dangers of removing this cover. Now I've removed the two screws holding on the burner cover. I'll now remove it. That will then give me access to the heat exchanger, the gas valve, the fan, the ignition system, and also that overheat thermostat. I will find the overheat thermostat in the top left hand corner of the boiler and it's clipped onto the flow pipe from the heat exchanger. Now this is a manual reset thermostat and on the later Ecotech boilers, they changed this to an overheat thermostat with no manual reset. So that did away with the problem altogether. Although this thermostat can be a very annoying and keep tripping out, it is a critical part of your boiler and it must not be tampered with in any way at all because it is a safety device and it is there for a reason. 
And as the name implies, it is an overheat thermostat. If you didn't have this overheat thermostat, the boiler has no control on how hot it could possibly get. So if for some reason there was a fault, the boiler would keep on running and basically just get hotter and hotter and hotter. And it could just literally catch fire and burn itself out. And that is why all modern boilers have overheat thermostats of some description. Now these thermostats aren't always facing the same way, but they're still exactly the same. Now here is the overheat thermostat and in between the two electrical plugs is a little red button. Now, when the boiler reaches 95 degrees, that is almost boiling, the button will pop out for safety and switch off your boiler, giving you an F5 fault. To reset the boiler, all I need to do is to push the button back in again. And when I do that, I will hear a little click as it goes down. Now I've used a pencil to do this just to make it easier to see. The connections are low voltage, but I'm happy in not going near them. Now I'm gonna go back down to the control panel where I can see F5 is still flashing. I'm then gonna turn the boiler off, then I'll wait a few seconds, then turn it back on again. I still have my controls set to on. I hear a click from the relay on the circuit board. Then the fan starts running, gas valve open, ignition and there we go the boiler is now back up and running again i can see the flame in the little viewing window here and the temperature is now steadily rising on the display but now we need to consider what caused the boiler to overheat in the first place now this is the main heat exchanger if i listen to this boiler i can hear that it is starting to kettle kettling is when the water inside the boiler starts to boil exactly the same as your kettle when that starts to boil. Kettling sounds like this. This is happening because the water is not flowing through the heat exchanger fast enough. And also if it stops altogether, your boiler will overheat virtually straight away and pop out that thermostat. Now the question is, why is the water not flowing through it fast enough? Now there are several things I can check and adjust and I'm gonna go through those now. One of the first things I'm going to do is just listen to the boiler, see how it sounds. If I think I can hear air trickling around, I'm going to go and check in the loft tank, make sure that's got water in it. If you have a sealed system, make sure that there is plenty of pressure between 1 and 1.5 bar. A very common cause is if radiator valves are closed right down or virtually closed. That restricts the flow and then the boiler may overheat. I quite often find this where maybe there's been a house with a lot of people in it and then they've all moved down so there's just one person and then the radiators have all been shut down in all the rooms just allowing a couple of radiators open. And then there's just not enough flow for the boiler to operate and then the boiler overheats. This is the same with thermostatic valves. I quite often find a house maybe with every radiator has a thermostatic valve. Now, if you have these turned down, then at some point there's a possibility that every radiator will be shut because the thermostat would have turned the radiator off. This will completely stop the water from flowing around the system. And so your boiler will straight away overheat and pop out that thermostat. It's always recommended to have one radiator, which is a bypass with just two lock shields on, like in a bathroom or a hallway. Just thought I'd mention, if you're wondering why these radiators are grey and sparkly, that's because I sprayed them with a special paint. And if you fancy having that, then you can watch my video all about how to do that. Another thing to check is the pump, because if the pump is not pumping hard enough, then it will not get the water to flow through the heat exchanger fast enough. But I need to be careful adjusting the pump speed because this can open up a whole nother bag of worms with something called pump over and sucking air into the system. That's for another video altogether. It could be a control fault like this zone valve not opening up correctly or being wired in incorrectly. And with zone valves, you should have an auto bypass and maybe that auto bypass has stopped working. Or there could be a blockage like this piece of pipe here, which I cut out is completely blocked with black magnetite. And I really have to push hard to get this drill to go through this bit of pipe and clean out that bit of magnetite. Obviously this bit of pipe is scrapped now. Blockages can be anywhere on old systems, like in this pump here. You can see how every vein is completely blocked with magnetite. And here it is after I've cleaned it out. You can see how that looks completely different now and every vein is completely clear and the water is going to flow through there with no trouble at all now. Then there is the main heat exchanger itself. Now this is one I took out of an old boiler and I decided to cut it in half, as you can see, to show you what's inside these heat exchangers. 
Now you can see it's just loads and loads of pipes which are squashed together and those waterways are very thin and you can see how it doesn't take a lot to block them up. You can see how that one there is completely blocked. Once these main heat exchangers become blocked there's not a lot I can do. I can try cleaning them out with chemicals but I've not always found that to be very successful. So then it's either replace the main heat exchanger or replace the boiler altogether. And finally, one of the last things I would do is adjust the power of the boiler. Now it says on this data sheet that this boiler has a minimum output of 5 kilowatts and a maximum output of 18.3 kilowatts. Now that is a big difference in power and the boiler quite happily operates in between these ranges. To explain what that means, consider putting a pan of water onto a hob. The temperature can then be adjusted from either high right down to low. The difference this makes is how long it takes for your pan of water to boil. Turned up high, the pan of water is going to boil quickly and will not be that efficient. Turned down to medium and the pan's going to take a bit longer to boil, but it's still going to get there and it's going to be more efficient. Turn a hob down too low and your pan's never going to come to the boil. Now I'm going to do exactly the same with this boiler and this is called range rating. So I'm going to reduce the power. Hopefully this has stopped the boiler from overheating and tripping out. Once again, this can only be carried out by a gas registered engineer. So you can ask your engineer about doing this as it may considerably improve your boiler's operation and efficiency. To adjust the power of this boiler, I need to go to the engineering mode. I do this by pushing and holding the middle button for 10 seconds. The screen will then change and show me a spanner and a flashing zero. I'm then going to press the minus button several times until I get to 96, 97, 96. Then I'm going to push the middle button. Number one is the power of the boiler, the kilowatt rating. And you can see this boiler is set to 10 kilowatts. Now push the middle button, I can then adjust the power. By pressing the plus button, I can change it up to its highest setting, which is 18 kilowatts, and it won't go any higher. And I can then also press the minus, and it'll take me right down to its lowest setting, which you can see is 4 kilowatts. But 4 kilowatts can be way too little power, so I'm going to put it back to the 10, and I save that setting by pushing the middle button again. And then the one will start flashing and then that's it. That's how I can adjust the power of this boiler. Then to go back to the home screen, just push and hold the middle button again for a further six seconds. And there we go. Now when this boiler comes on, I can see the flame here and then I can see these little bars and they indicate how much power the boiler is using. And because this boiler is a 18 kilowatt boiler and I've adjusted it down to 10 kilowatts, these little bars will only ever go halfway up the screen now because it's basically half the power of the boiler. And when it's operating, the boiler will adjust its power up and down to what is needed. And then we'll see these little bars rise from the bottom to the middle as the power of the boiler changes. So if your boiler is kettling like crazy and tripping out, then adjusting this power will then hopefully reduce that from happening or stop it from happening altogether. Because it may be that this setting has never been adjusted and it's set on its default to maximum setting, which in most cases is way more power than is actually needed. And by adjusting this, we can make the boiler more efficient, which will save you money on your gas bills. Now it's also worth mentioning that I've fitted a magnetic filter to this system and you can see it above the boiler here. If you don't have a magnetic filter, it's well worth getting one fitted. Some cleaning chemicals can then be added and then the whole system might come back to life. Then you'd have a much cleaner system. Again, I've tried this in the past and it does work to a certain degree, but it will never be as good as new. But it is well worth putting a magnetic filter on your system and then adding some chemicals to the system because I have had some really great results by doing this. You can see how this MagnaClean is covered in bits of black magnetite, which has come out of the system. And this black magnetite is incredibly bad for your whole system. And in this photo, you can see that pile of black magnetite which I've taken off the filter. That's what's blocking the heat exchanger on this boiler. And of course, you can watch my video all about magnetic filters. 
One last thing to mention is the thermostat on the front of the boiler. Now, if I go back to the scenario of the pan of water on your hob, the thermostat on the front of the boiler is the setting of how hot your pan of water will get. Now on the front of the boiler, we have three buttons. We have a picture of a hand and we have a minus button and we have a plus button. If we push the button with a picture of our hand on it in the middle, it will then take us to the boiler's running temperature. That's the temperature the boiler will try and run at. If we press the plus button, we can adjust the temperature up. And then if we press the minus button, we can adjust the temperature down like this. So where should you be setting that temperature? Well, if you have a hot water cylinder, it is recommended to have that temperature set between 65 and 70 degrees because your stored hot water should always be kept between 60 and 65 degrees. That's the temperature at which bugs like Legionnaire's disease are killed, which can come from stored hot water and loft tanks. If you set your boiler temperature below that, then your hot water will never reach that temperature and your boiler will be continuously cycling, trying to get to the correct temperature. That's if your hot water thermostat is set between 60 and 65 degrees. As this is a high efficiency condensing boiler and it's running central heating and a hot water tank, the optimal temperature is recommended at 65 degrees. So that's the temperature which I'm going to leave this boiler set at. Now, if this boiler is fitted onto a system where you do not have a hot water cylinder, then you could set this temperature down a lot lower to say 55 degrees. And that may help to stop your boiler from kettling. And the lower the temperature, the more efficiently these boilers will run. But for this boiler, it's all up and running again and a fingers crossed it's gonna keep on running and it's not gonna trip out again. Of course, there is no guarantee with this because there could also be other faults on the system and the heat exchanger still has poor flow through it. So if you have got this F5 fault, hopefully you know a little bit more about it and call that gas registered engineer to come and help you out with this problem. As you can see, it is not as straightforward as just resetting a thermostat. And finally, to find a gas registered engineer, I've left a link in the description, which will take you to the gas register where you can find a genuine local gas safe registered engineer. Right, that's about it then. So I do hope my video has been helpful to you. If you want to watch my next video, then you can click on the link just here. And if you found my video helpful in any way, then please give me that little bit of feedback by clicking on that thumbs up. And like I said, that will help others to find your video. And if you enjoyed the video, then you can click on subscribe. And if you want to receive a notification the next time I upload a help video, then click on that bell. And of course, share the video with your friends. And if you want to buy me a cup of coffee, I'd like to say a really big thank you to everybody who's left a donation in my toolbox fund. It's really appreciated and it helped me to make more videos, which will hopefully help you. Bye for now, and I'll see you next time.